making the starter for the Easter bread is actually really simple. Um, so we've got our four small potatoes. Uh, the, the weight is 250 grams, but it can be, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less. It's fine. I've peeled them. The peelings are going to go into my little wormery compost situation. And with these potatoes, I'm going to cut them in four pieces and I'm going to put them in a pan and cover them with a liter of water. Oop, nearly stabbed myself. Okay, cool. So potatoes in water over. I'm not adding any salt to this because I want this potato to eventually ferment overnight. Okay. Um, I will also need three tablespoons of, um, rye flour, wholemeal rye flour. This is it. So, 250 grams of chopped peeled potatoes, one liter of water, and I'm gonna put it on, bring it to boil and cook them until the potatoes are really, really soft. Then we're gonna get rid of all of the water apart from 200 mils. We're gonna mash it together with this water, leave it somewhere warm to ferment overnight with the rye flour. Exciting. There, cool. The potatoes are boiled and I left the, um, lid kind of half on half off so there's still some liquid left over there what we need is these boiled potatoes and just 200 mils of this liquid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the sieve and i'm going to measure make sure that it's on zero and i'm going to measure the liquid okay there's 250 left so i'm not even gonna i'm just gonna eyeball it i'm just gonna leave a little bit behind we started with 200 grams of raw potatoes they boiled and we mashed them with 200 milliliters of the water that they were boiling in and this is roughly the uh texture that we've got here okay now the water wasn't hot anymore. It cooled down, but it's still warm. And that's what I want to kind of like kickstart this fermentation process. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three tablespoons of this rye flour into it. Rye flour, especially this unrefined variety, already has um, loads of yeasts clinging onto it. Um, I'm going to mix it in and it should by tomorrow if we leave it in a warm place start bubbling up and almost kind of like a sourdough starter uh now my kitchen is a little bit cold we're actually expecting a snowstorm today so i might put it into um the oven uh once i finish with it so it's still gonna be warm and i'm just gonna cover it and put it there and have a look at it tomorrow morning. We're gonna have a look at it tomorrow morning. So this uh, rye flour and potato and water mixture is going to go into my oven, which is obviously not, not hot, but just like nice and, nice and cozy and warm. All right, I'm gonna cover it first. Now, whilst I was doing this this morning, I thought to hold an experiment. We're gonna see how it's gonna work out, but I just thought, for those of you that do have a sourdough starter at home, why don't we try and see what happens if, and I've got exactly the same situation, uh, potato mashed in 200 mils of the water that it was cooked in, a little bit warm, and I've got a starter. I haven't got a rice starter, I've got the Ukrainian one um, made by my friend Katria um, Kaluzhna. And I have re, um, refreshed it, so it's uh, kind of like, it's nice and alive and bubbly. Um, and it was one tablespoon of starter, two tablespoons of organic uh, white strong bread flour, and um, two tablespoons of water, I just mixed it. This is the consistency. Um, I am not a sourdough bread expert, even though I, I make it a lot um, but I just thought why don't we see what happens if you do this instead of adding the flour and then we'll compare tomorrow 
also if, if some of you are experts and you get any ideas about this while watching this video please do comment in um uh, in the comment section i really appreciate your input it's really nice to have this amazing foodie community um super knowledgeable and yeah so here we are i've got one that's potato refreshed starter and a little bit of water and i've got my uh rye flour and i'm going to cover them both tightly so they don't dry out and i'm gonna um and i'm gonna leave actually this one that's already a starter just out uh covered in the kitchen and i'm gonna put this one which obviously hasn't fermented at all yet into my warm oven okay and then tomorrow we're gonna make the paschas okay so our mashed potato and rye flour according to luda's recipe has been in the warm oven then i switched it off a bit then i switched it on again today but for about 20 hours let's see what happens okay so let's take it out so there it's literally been at like the lowest of the low feels just warm to come close this is the moment of truth so i wonder if it needed longer than what we gave it in order to start bubbling up and actually become sourdoughy uh, I suspect that Luda would have done it in her kitchen, which was full of ferments and all sorts of yeast floating around and maybe, you know, the 24 hours was enough, but anyway, let's see. Uh, okay, so I don't think that it's quite where it needs to be. Let me just grab one minute. So let's see if it's bubbling at all. It's kind of, it's a little bit puffy. It's not quite there, but we need to film today. So we're just gonna use it. Even if it hasn't kind of gone full on sourdough, it's still going to have an amazing um, texture because of all of that mashed potato. I think that's the main kind of thing uh, that we're doing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, 250 mils of warm milk to this mashed potato starter. Okay, here it is. Uh, so I'm just gonna use 250 mils of that. A bit more. A little bit more. Cool. And then, <clears throat> according to Luda, Luda's recipe, we also add seven grams of uh, fast action dried yeast, but she would have used fresh yeast, and that you would need 15 grams of fresh yeast for that. So I'm going to add that in and I'm just going to give it, do you want to come a little bit closer? And then we're just going to give this mixture a bit of a whisk. Oh, 150 grams of um, golden pasta sugar, but you can just use regular sugar, whatever's you use in your country um, then I've got four egg yolks here and I've saved the egg whites for later so four egg yolks just gonna put the sugar in and uh, we're gonna whisk it until it's fluffy you can do a handheld handheld whisk um, electric or you can do it by hand it's fine in Luda's recipe it says whisk until it's nice and foamy so that's what we're gonna do also going to add a little bit of vanilla paste just for you know an extra delicious flavor there about half a tablespoon and I'm gonna put it back on it's becoming nice and foamy so the egg yolks and the sugar are super white and fluffy I'm just going to add about half a tablespoon spoon of vanilla paste but you can use any vanilla that you like or none at all or a little bit of almond essence or whatever you like in terms of flavor. So let's whisk, whisk it again. This is super nice and fluff. I'm going to switch it to the hook attachment now. And I'm going to take half of this out because remember I'm working with half of the liquid and half of the flour to not to break the machine, essentially. 
So I'm just going to scrape at the bottom to make sure that none of that is kind of like sticking too much. And I'm going to eyeball it, but you can, if you, if you know you have stickler for measurements, then absolutely do measure out exactly half. But I reckon I can eyeball it more or less correctly. Half the egg and uh, sugar fluffed up mixture is in here. I'm going to add the milk and starter mixture in here. Um, let me just get that out properly. And then we're gonna add 10 grams of sea salt. Okay, which is right here. I'm just gonna go like that. And we're gonna whisk it up first and then we're gonna sift the flour in and we're going to mix it for quite a while uh, using a hook attachment. But of course you can do all of this by hand if you don't have a machine. Right, so egg yolk mixture and the starter and milk are mixed. I'm just going to sift the flour in. Normally, I don't bother sifting the flour in, but today I want to honor Luda's original recipe and I know that she would sift, so I'm going to do that. Sifting it in and then we're gonna put it on the machine again and run it with a hook attachment until it's really nice and, and viscous and almost like a window pane situation, which I'll show you later. So we've sifted the flour into our wet ingredients. I'm gonna swap the attachment here to hook. And we're just gonna let it run for quite a while. Start slowly so the flour doesn't go everywhere. And then I'm gonna speed it up a bit. Okay, so the dough has been going on for a good five minutes. I am going to put some oil in and just kind of just oil the... It's better to use a neutral oil, but I'm in the middle of a rush and I'll just use the oil and that's fine. Okay, and then I'm just going to take it off and scrape it into here. So our dough goes into an oiled bowl. This is half of it, and we're gonna repeat the process again with half of the remaining egg yolks and sugar, with half the liquid and half the flour. Do not forget to put another 10 grams of salt. Um, it's basically the same process again. And then we're gonna join both of these doughs together and let them rise. So we'll finish the second half of the dough. Uh, egg yolks, liquid, flour and another 10 grams of salt and then I'm just gonna again go in with my hand it's wet and sticky but that's what you want and then we're gonna join it with the other dough we're gonna cover it so it doesn't go dry and we're gonna leave it to rise and relax for an hour okay so look look at this lovely amazing it's gonna be so nice to work with so soft and luscious so I'm just kind of rolling it into a bowl like that and we're gonna put it in and I'm gonna cover it I'm gonna tie it around so it really is kind of properly covered and we're gonna leave it somewhere warm for now Okay, remember our little experiment situation with a bit of the sourdough starter that I had. Let's have a look. So this is potato and sourdough starter. And it is, look, what is that? It's a bit of dill, isn't it? Oh, plain. How did it get in there? It's okay. <laughs> bit of dill. Um, so this is looking good. I'm going to do exactly the same process. Um, I am going to add just a little bit of yeast uh, because we don't have enough time to kind of let it rise in the fridge overnight again. 
but if you are a um, an experienced sourdough baker I'm sure that you'll know what to do you know it just needs a lot longer um, time to rise okay so exactly the same process just as we did before with yeast I just wanted to show you my the, the, the results of my experiment I'll show you what it turns out as at the end as well just a recap is mashed potato it's water and the refreshed sourdough starter instead of the ripe flour okay so my Easter Pascha dough has been uh, in a really warm place I actually did keep it in a very extremely low oven for an hour and let's have a look at it I mean, it looks amazing it has risen how I want it to and it's super soft so let's just pour it out here. So this is our yeasted enriched dough. And you know what we need? We'll need our currants as well. And it just, just a tiny bit of oil on my hands. But just a little bit of sunflower oil on my hands. I'm going to use a dough scraper to it's going to be much easier to work with and we're going to start kneading it look at that look how amazing it is we're going to start kneading it and we're going to start kneading uh, these currants in as well okay so just stretch it out sprinkle um, kind of like a third of the currants over and then I'm going to go quite wet but once you start working it it'll be all right okay and then again just like that a little bit more oil on my hands so it doesn't stick collect all of this stuff here and then we're gonna put the rest of the currants in another third even okay and then we're gonna go again feel like there might be enough of the currants I just don't see how I'm gonna incorporate it without them going everywhere so I'm gonna adjust it in the in the recipe itself we're gonna do a third less than what we've put in there just keep working it a bit then we're, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a five minute rest and then I'm gonna start kneading again Okay, so I've mixed the currants in, covered the dough with the bowl and just let it rest for, it actually was about 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna oil my hands again and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna give it a nice knead. You see, after it rested, it's not sticking as much. It's just a tiny little bit here that I'm gonna scrape off. And I'm just gonna keep kneading it. Of course, you can use a machine here. Just use the dough hook again, maybe split it in half and do uh, first half and then the other. If it keeps sticking, 
just put a little bit more oil on your hands and just keep kneading it. If it starts stick sticking too much, just slap it on and just do this. You might need to keep letting it rest for five minutes and then going in with oiled hands and just keep doing it for about 10 minutes. It's a bit of a workout, I'm afraid. It's okay. And it's soft, beautiful to work with. This is therapy. This is therapy. Kneaded it for quite a while, at least kind of seven minutes. My muscles feel strong. The dough is nice and smooth. And I've prepared two tins. So I've got a little one like this and I've got a bigger cake tin. And what I need to do is just to fill them halfway through, okay? So, very sticky dough. Oiled hands. So for the small tin, I'm just doing this, okay? I'm just folding it under. Remember that this is going to rise. So we're just half filling the tins, okay? So I'm just going to oil my hands a bit more and I'm just gonna smooth it over a little bit like that. And then when it proves it's going to fill this and rise, okay? And we're gonna do exactly the same with a big piece of dough. So I'm kind of stretching it and folding it under so we've got a bit of a ball kind of thing. And I'm gonna put it into this bigger tin and I'm just gonna... So we're gonna have two Paskas. One for you and one possibly for your neighbor or your friend or your family. It's quite a communal thing. But original recipe, Aunt Luda's original recipe would probably be kind of like three times as much, so, or even more. I remember having about 15 Paskas every Easter, but I've kind of like scaled it down for you a bit. So we're just gonna cover these tightly and leave them to prove for about an hour and then we're gonna bake them. Okay, so the dough for Pasca has been uh, proving in its tins for just over an hour. It's looking good to me. So they're still gonna rise and they're gonna have like, kind of like big puffy hats on top. It has happened to me before that it has risen really fast and overspilled a little bit. So the hat is kind of like jaunty, let's call it. If it happens, don't stress. It's fine, it's still going to be delicious, but I'm keeping fingers crossed this is gonna be all right. And then I've got my other little one here. Um, so let's put them in the oven. The oven is at 180 degrees at the moment. So we're just gonna go in. So to top our Easter breads, we're just going to whisk um, two egg whites. I'm gonna do it by hand because you don't need it to super, super fluffy meringue, just kind of like thick enough. And then I'm, I've got uh, 50 grams of icing sugar here and lemon. I've got kind of like a quarter of a lemon, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start whisking it. Okay, so when it's starting to look nice and fluffy, I'm just going to add the sugar and lemon in. So not fluffy meringue, just kind of thick and viscous with that icing sugar and uh, lemon juice. And we're going to put it on top of the Pascas once they cool down. So Easter breads, the little one I've already taken out and it took 40 minutes and the big one has taken 50 minutes. And they started coloring a little bit too much. So I covered the tops of them with um, some foil. I'm just going to wait for them to cool down and then I'm gonna take them out of their tins 
and we're gonna use some of that meringue to pour over them and decorate them. Okay, so while the big bread is cooling, we're going to decorate the little one, which is cool enough. So it's still a little bit warm, but it's not, you know, it's not too hot. And I'm going to pour this over. It is going to trickle down the sides and everything. Um, so, so this is our um, egg white, icing sugar and lemon. I'm just going to tease it a little bit so it goes to the sides like that. We want those kind of like little trickles going down. Isn't it just gorgeous already? And it is going to dry and create a crust. When I was a baby, well, when I was a kid, I really loved the, the white of it. Okay, so beautiful. And then for this one, we're gonna go old school. I'm gonna do a little bit of hundreds and thousands. Don't worry, you can transfer it onto a clean plate afterwards. We don't need obviously all of the pool of, uh, of the white. It's just to catch it. Just like in the 80s. We weren't particularly religious, but one time when my mom did go to church would be um, during Easter and she would take all of the paskas that she made. She'd go actually really early in the morning at like five o'clock in the morning and she would queue um, and uh, get these uh, Easter breads uh, blessed and would all, you know, as I say, they would make as many as 15 and they would be shared with friends and family and you know you can share with your neighbors so this is it um when it kind of sets i'll take it off wash the plate but let's decorate the other one as well so for a more natural look and probably how people used to do it before hundreds of thousands existed is lemon i'm just going to grate it on this extremely dangerous grater but if you have one of those really uh, amazing pears where you can just take like nice curls of lemon zest off, do it. I do have it somewhere, but uh, children, Wilfred, he sometimes posts it into flour, into like sacks of things, I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to do this really dangerous <laughs> zesting. So we've got the lemon zest, we've got the uh, poppy uh, seeds, and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm gonna put this over, it's nice and cool now. I'm just gonna put it on top and let it trickle naturally. Yeah, that looks nice. And then, it's from great height, so it falls randomly on. I mean, of course I prefer this one. I prefer Katria's version to the hundreds and thousands, but I thought having both would be quite fun. And then the poppy seeds. Look how beautiful. Nature's hundreds and thousands. Extremely exciting. I'm gonna cut a piece of the Easter bread now, just to show you the beautiful texture inside. And normally we just eat it as it is, you know, just as a kind of sweet, delicious bread. But my husband, it is so light and so fluffy. So this is kind of Ukrainian way already. Look how soft it is. But my husband, no doubt, would put something on top of it. Some kind of 
cream or you know we've got a little bit of poached rhubarb so if you wanted to you could do this kind of move but it's not traditional but doing it for you joe doing it for you needless to say it's really good if you slice it into thinner slices and freeze it and then toast it from frozen or if it just goes a little bit stale bread and butter pudding the best Christos Voskres. Happy Easter.